What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today you're joining me at the largest Tesla supercharger east of Texas in Dillon, South Carolina with 40 stalls. And I'm gonna be giving you a full tour. If you're like me, you probably have absolutely no idea where Dillon, South Carolina is. So let me show you where it is and why this site is 40 stalls and why it matters. So we're inside my 2023 Tesla Model Y and let's just zoom out a little bit here. We are charged up to 99% because I've been filming and flying my drone and things here. So I'll show you some of that stuff. But here we have I-95. And for those of you not super familiar with North or with US geography, I-95 is the route that connects basically the Northeast to the Southeast, or basically Miami to New York. Um, there's tons of traffic along here. This is a major corridor for Tesla. Interesting that they have that site reduced service. But this is one of the most important corridors in the United States. Uh, arguably, probably number two behind I-5 out on, or out in California, but even though some of the local areas that these chargers are at may not have a ton of EVs, the people passing through definitely do. So it seems Tesla has basically be, been building sites every 20 or so miles recently along I-95. So you can see just the crazy density along this route. Uh, there's a bit of a gap there, but in the South Carolina, North Carolina, there's just a ton. So we're all the way up here with, at Dillon. We have 16 stalls in Florence at Bucky's, 18 stalls at Florence at the mall. That one was built all the way back in 2017. So just to give you some context of how long there's been a lot of travel on this route from EVs, uh, that site's not that heavily utilized anymore, just being that it's a version two and there's now version three options along the route. Uh, Santee, that was one of the first version three sites in all of the US, or at least on the East Coast, or sorry, not Santee, uh, it, that was, Hardyville, that was one of the first version three sites. Um, and that was the one that made it so that you didn't have to go to the airport in Savannah. So that was a huge deal. Uh, and there's just, like I said, a ton of sites along the I-95 corridor and they're all pretty heavily utilized. Uh, not all of them constantly. And while I've been hanging out here uh, at the Dillon, South Carolina supercharger, I actually had a couple different locals kind of just pull in or people going to the uh, Popeyes or the cookout or the um, Zaxby's behind me, just wondering why this is here, why it's so big, because they don't really see people using it. Well, the site's only three weeks old, so kind of makes sense. People have to develop the habit to go to a new supercharger. There's also the Bucky's supercharger that's only about 20 minutes away. However, with only 16 stalls and just Bucky's kind of being chaotic, if I was on a road trip and time was of the essence, I would absolutely stop here instead of Bucky's. Bucky's, I'd say, is a better stop if you want better amenities to some extent, um, or if you have like your family with you and you just want to kill some time. But if you're looking for the most efficient way to road trip, this is probably where you want to stop. It's a lot easier on and off. Uh, you'll never have to worry about capacity here with 40 stalls. Well, at least not in the near future, I think. Uh, eventually, 40 stalls will actually probably be small, but we shall see. But anyway, enough about the context of this site. Uh, if you haven't already, watch my video from Texas. I actually did a video of a supercharger at Bucky's. If I remember correctly, that was 56 stalls, um, something like that. But it was a very large site, and that's the east, or that's the largest site east of Arizona, I believe. Uh, but they actually do have the new Quartzite supercharger that makes Quartzite Arizona within that like half mile radius, one of the most dense supercharger locations uh, in the entire country, or maybe even in the world, uh, maybe not China or outside of China. But we're gonna start with the incoming grid connection uh, and then we're gonna just do a full tour here of kind of the architecture of the site. And if you're not familiar with Tesla's version three supercharger architecture, I'd highly recommend you check out uh, some of my other infrastructure videos. I did a video comparing 
uh, Rivian Site Architecture, EVgo, Electrify America, Tesla version two, Tesla version three. And then I also did a separate video talking specifically about Tesla's prefabricated supercharger unit architecture and how that plays into Tesla's version three supercharger architecture as a whole. Uh, version four, I don't have enough information on to do a deep dive on, but as soon as there's a version four site, at least somewhere near me, hopefully, uh, I'll be able to do a deep dive on that. I'll need to get my hands on a plan set so I can see uh, kind of all the different runs and things like that, because that's how you can figure out the architecture. A lot of the stuff is hidden underground or uh, in wireways, things like that. So you can't quite figure everything out uh, without a plan set. So we've come out to the roadside, I-95 is that direction. We've got Popeye's Cookout, uh, we've got Zaxby's, and we have two 1500 kVA utility transformers. This side is served by Duke Energy Progress as the utility. Uh, both of these transformers have metering and CTs inside the transformer with meters attached to the outside. Uh, we have our primary dip lines coming down here. This is a 13.2 thousand volt uh, primary run, so 13.2 kV, uh, and you can see those are the overhead lines, and then you have the dip coming off, and then we're coming down on both of these, and then each one of these is serving one of these utility transformers. So like I said, these are 1500 kVA, which is pretty typical for uh, these. So if you're not familiar, Tesla Supercharger version three, the cabinets are 387 uh, kVA per cabinet, so roughly 380 kilowatts per cabinet, uh, plus or minus. And contrary to popular belief, Tesla's version three systems, they cannot do 250 kilowatts at every single one of these stalls. Because if that was the case, we would have 10 megawatts if my math is mathing, uh, which we clearly do not based on only having a 3000 kVA of combined utility connection here. But anyway, there's no switch gear here because each one of the cabinets has an attached service entrance disconnect uh, in these Lincoln Electric EV light boxes. So there's a 600 amp breaker inside here. You can see that here, 600 amperes, 480, 277, three phase, four wire. And it's the EV light product. Uh, they're locked, of course. And then inside here, you have the individual DC post disconnects. So this site has nine of Tesla's prefabricated supercharger units that you can see over here, which we'll get to in a second. And then we have one just lone cabinet that is done in a traditional way, traditional-ish. So we have the cabinet, service entrance, and then we have the four stalls here. So these are put on to Tesla's pre-cast bases. Uh, so they, they did very little concrete work on site here, actually. All of these superchargers, as far as I can tell, were put onto these precast bases, which is pretty typical these days. So you have 6A, 6B, 6C, and 6D. And then you also have your van accessible stall and you have your access path to the sidewalk there. So pretty well done. Coming over here, we're gonna go to the pre prefabricated units. You have four of Tesla's PSUs on this side, 16 stalls, and you have five of Tesla's PSUs on this side, 20 stalls. Um, trick with version three superchargers, you can just count the cabinets and multiply by four. That's not a hundred percent right. Uh, just given that there are some sites that have less than four per cabinet, especially outside the U S but we're just talking North America market right now. But, uh, the way that Tesla superchargers work is that they have a DC bus connecting the cabinets and being that this site has two grid connections. Uh, this site is actually effectively two different supercharger installations that just happen to be at the same site. So this site is effectively split in half. One of those transformers could blow up in theory, and the other one would still function, and you'd have half the site still working. Uh, and that's also partially a result of Tesla's version 3 supercharger architecture only supporting up to seven cabinets on the same DC bus or on the same star center control cabinet. So we're gonna come down here, you're gonna see a site master controller cabinet and you're going to see a star center cabinet. So the site master controller that for obvious reasons does load management, things like that. And star center, that means that that cabinet is the one that's controlling the DC bus for, the, for that installation segment, if you will. 
So here we have the site master controller. So this has kind of communications, things like that. You can see by the antenna there. And then over here, this one is star center for this half of the installation. So sometimes they're labeled, sometimes they're not. Sometimes you just have to look at plan sets. Uh, and this one, as the rest of them, they do not have cellular because they just have one cellular connection per uh, site, essentially. And there's effectively two sites here, as I mentioned. So this whole thing comes in as one. They did pour some little bit of concrete here. They have the bus or the raceway between. You got the trash cans. And then this is just a normal cabinet here, not star center, not site controller, anything like that. And you have your incoming AC, you have your communication lines, uh, and then it's going from the cabinet into there. And then we have effectively the same thing on this side. So here we have star center. Again, it's labeled, which makes it easy to find. And then this one actually has additional comms lines compared to the rest. And then this is the site master controller over here. So just like that. But this is, like I said, the largest Tesla supercharger installation east of Texas. Uh, and while it's pretty empty today, in fact, no one's charging at the moment, I am plugged because I reached hundred percent. Typical Tesla fashion, they're building for the demand that will come, which may not exist today. So I think with holiday travel, things like this, I wouldn't be surprised if this site is half utilized come Thanksgiving, Christmas travel season, uh, when the I-95 corridor just gets absolutely hammered with snowbirds, family travel, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and if you've been following EVs for a little bit, you saw just how slammed Electrify America and even Tesla superchargers got last year. So Tesla's really done a lot to build out capacity in the past year. They've opened a crazy amount of stalls. I don't know the exact number offhand since the beginning of the year. Uh, and I've seen very few issues actually. So very impressive by the Tesla supercharging team. This was just a dirt lot a couple of months ago between the Zaxby's and a Popeye's doing a whole lot of nothing. To my knowledge, this lot is owned by Popeye's or the owner of Popeye's here. So nice of them to have this as a site host. You've got plenty of options all around. You've got a gas station, you've got a Zaxby's, you've got uh, Popeye's, Starbucks, Taco Bell. So plenty of options depending on what you're in the mood for and what time of day it is, but all of them are open fairly long hours. So you should be able to find a restroom at just about any hour of the day. But anyway, if you found this video useful, hit the like button. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys for watching.